Welcome back to The Exchange. Generative AI is shaping up to be one of the most influential technologies of our time, and it comes with a major cost. According to Goldman Sachs, a chat GPT query requires about 10 times more electricity than a Google search, leading Goldman to forecast an increase in data center power demand of 160 percent between now and the end of the decade. All of this fueling renewed interest in nuclear energy, with Bill Gates-backed TerraPower breaking ground on their first nuclear plant in Wyoming earlier this week. Joining me now in an exclusive Exclusive interview is Chris Levesque. He is TerraPower's CEO. Chris, congratulations and welcome. Thanks a lot and thanks for having me, Kelly. A lot of the energy nerds I know are very excited about this project and they're typically a skeptical bunch. Um, talk to us about what exactly the difference is with the kind of nuclear project you're pursuing and how you think it might be able to be rolled out more broadly. Sure. Um, TerraPower's plant, Natrium, is an advanced nuclear reactor. Uh, so it's still fission. We're still making heat by breaking uranium atoms like we have done safely for 60 years. But it turns out today's nuclear energy isn't affordable. Uh, the plants are just giant. They require huge amounts of concrete and piping. Uh, so we needed to move to a new technology. That's why Bill Gates created the company. Uh, and uh, turns out we're slated to be America's next reactor uh, because we're so far through the NRC, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission process. Um, so not only is America's next reactor, um, this plant in Wyoming, it, it's, it's the first advanced reactor in the free world. A molten salt mini nuke? <laughs> Break it down for us. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, today's plants, which are super safe, are cooled with water. Um, the natrium plant, natrium happens to mean sodium in, in uh, Latin and a few other languages. Uh, we're going to cool our reactor with a liquid metal called sodium. Uh, another big difference is uh, we have uh, energy storage, which allows us to boost the output of the plant when wind and solar come and go throughout the day. So, uh, you know, we're big believers in a massive expansion of wind and solar, but uh, Natrium will really complement that expansion by uh, being able to boost its power when the wind and the sun are there. It still seems to me the biggest problem with trying to roll out nuclear more broadly. And of course, as we get more aware of the drawbacks of renewables with the intermittency issue, the idea of rolling out more nuclear power is very attractive. But even this plant's price tag is $4 billion, if I'm not mistaken, with the DOE contributing up to $2 billion of that. I mean, these are just massively, massively expensive. Yeah, so the original project uh, includes that you just described includes more than building the plant. That includes the first time design and licensing with the NRC. We're even building some manufacturing facilities for our components with that budget. So um, it is true the first plant will cost more. Uh, but by the time you get to the fifth or sixth plant, uh, natrium is going to be very competitive with uh, with even natural gas or or solar plus batteries. Uh, our private investors wouldn't be moving forward if there wasn't this this strong business case. Yeah. OK, so by by the way, we had a CEO of AES on talking about how they think renewables are the future and that nuclear is not in the euphoria over this has been a quote unquote a little overblown. What would you say about that? I would say because of nuclear's uh, inferior cost story in the past, that's what's led utilities to have this pessimism. But I think more and more you're seeing um, people who really understand the grid see that uh, even if we have a massive expansion of wind and solar up to something like 70 percent, you're going to need 20 to 30 percent nuclear on a carbon free grid because wind and solar are an intermittent resource. And as you add each increment of wind and solar, we're, we're only at 20 something percent uh, renewables in the U.S. today each increment of renewables gets more expensive. And so if you're trying to lower your overall system cost, uh, 20 to 30 percent nuclear is going to be the way to go. And then again, because natrium uh, is, is going to cost about half of what today's nuclear fission technology mm -hmm. costs, and it makes more valuable electricity, in fact, because what I told you about, uh, we can boost our power when the wind and the sun are there. Sure. That's when electrons are most valuable. So we're, we're lower cost and we're higher value. That's when electrons are most valuable. That is my favorite line so far. Quickly, the election in November, does the outcome of that uh, affect, I mean, if Biden wins, ha have the Inflation Reduction Act or other things like that supported nuclear rollouts? If Trump wins, is there a risk that these projects go nowhere for a period of time or would you be looking elsewhere for impact? 
Yeah, yeah, so it's true. Nuclear energy has often been a partisan uh, choice, but over the last 10 years, um, Democrats have come out in support of nuclear in, in addition to Republicans. It's, it's for different reasons. Often uh, Republicans are supporting it for its uh, energy security value, and, and Democrats are now becoming more and more aware that it is a clean and carbon-free source. So mm -hmm. Uh, for about the last five or six years, we've really enjoyed bipartisan support, yeah. and I think we'll have great support in either administration. All right, Chris, thanks for joining us today to tell us more about it. We'll be following with great interest. We appreciate your time.